Good lord. There's a lot of things to talk about tonight. Let's do it. When Raw, Raw, SmackDown, WWE, or AEWN, tune in to The Joe Cronin Show. Live, live, live on YouTube for review and reaction. Joe Cronin and Jake break down all the action. All of it. The Joe Cronin Show, your source for wrestling opinions, news, and insanity. A wrestling podcast with attitude. Mature audiences only. Join our community of over 70,000 people. Subscribe free on YouTube to The Joe Cronin Show. FGT3500, thanks for the sub, bro. What's up? How you doing, man? Always good to get a sub before you even really uh, get going tonight. Some things we didn't touch on yesterday that I got to touch on. There's uh, Regis Filman passing, um, the bar fight, the UFOs that we really didn't get into enough last night, plus promoting the Corrupted Podcast uh, is tonight. We're going to have a very special guest on Corrupted Podcast tonight. I'm pretty hyped up for it. Jesse's not here to talk over everybody, no. (laughs) Poor guy. How's everybody in the chat doing, man? What's up? I'm wearing your I'm wearing your favorite shirt, Dave. Devious Dave Rose, I'm wearing your favorite shirt, brother. Can you believe it? We're going to find out if that's copywritten or not, <laughs> even though I paid for it. You know, every time I pay for a song on YouTube, it gets a copyright deal anyway. You know, and I've got the license, which is crazy. So the other day I got hit with like fucking, with like 70 of these things. Um, like 70 of these damn things. And, you know, that's fine, but, you know, you paid for it. So... Then you fight, you got to fight them all individually. That's the craziest thing to me. Why do you have to fight them all individually? Why am I fighting these copyright things all individually? That doesn't make any sense to me. So you fight one false claim and you win. Of course, because you're right. Like, without a doubt, you're right. And then you got to fight another false claim. And then you fight another false claim. And you got to go through all the false claims. Of course, it doesn't matter, though, because the first eight hours, it seems to take hours to, to fix the claims. So all you can do is add up all the claims, grab all the money you, you spent on the mo- on the songs and the stuff that you technically own or should be allowed to use. Then you got to go grab the videos and compare them, the money you didn't make off of them, which isn't much anyway. And then I guess you fight them in court. I don't know. Like, but for what? You know what I mean? It's not like, you know, you're making enough to, like, prove that, you know, hey, look, I should have made, look, I should have made uh, $5 on this video every day. So, you know, what are you going to, you know, you're going to fight for $5? But either way, what they're doing is wrong, you know what I mean? Because they're selling you the song. So I guess you could fight for your money back on the song since you can't really use it in the way it was intended to. You know what I mean? So I suppose that you could get into that. Scotland in the house, baby. What's up? What's up, guys? How's everybody doing tonight? I hope you're all good. Um, my my corrupted podcast uh, does multiple things. Not only does corrupted podcast, um, you know, it helps pay the bills, but it's also another podcast. It's another show we do on Patreon and other stuff like that. So hope you come check that out later on, and uh, that'd be really cool. What's up? We got lots of stuff. Regis Philbin, people want to talk about that. People wanted me to get face masks going. 
So we're going to talk about that. Super chat. Super chat. You get a super chat. Face turn officially underway. Oh, wow. Love to JCS chat. Wow. The goon is going face. He had gone. He was face. Then he was heel. Now he's going apparently back face again. The goon. What up, goon? That's crazy to hear, man. What what type of stuff are we in? Are we in for when the goon goes face? The goon. The goon. The goon. Devious Dave Rose might be going face two in the chat. I don't know. I don't know what's up with him. He could be going. He could be. Uh, Devious Dave Rose could be going face in the chat. I don't know, man. I don't know what's up. I thought it wasn't really him. The only reason why I was I was trying to protect him. I didn't want somebody to come in and start, you know, doing stuff under somebody else's name, you know, that's not them. So like I was checking with him. So I did get the. I think the only place he's not banned is Instagram. So he sent me a DM over there and. So we cl- clarified that is him. Okay. We're good to go. Should I put the savage glasses on? I don't know. Yo, Goon, thank you for the super chat, man. Much appreciated. It's late on a Saturday night, man, and we're just underway. I'm feeling the coffee is starting to kick in, brother. Um, uh, first thing I wanted to talk about was this uh, JFK meme I thought was hilarious. And we're going to talk about the bar fight. We're going to talk about everything. I mean, there's so much to talk about, but... Um, I got one here that's hilarious to me. In fact, I got I think I got to tweet it in order to see it. Yeah, I'm going to tweet it so I can read it. Rather than Dropbox it to myself. I should have had all this prepared before the show, but I didn't... You know, I didn't know when I was going to be able to go live. I know people wanted me to talk about a whole bunch of stuff, and I didn't get to it yesterday. We got a little derailed there, distracted on the show. The UFO stuff never came. Um, okay, so here we go. Here's the meme. I just tweeted it out, but I tweeted it really sloppy. I'll probably delete the tweet. I didn't really convey what I want to say right now. Somebody sent me this. They said, what do you think of this uh, meme, Joe, or this, this comment, Joe, meme, whatever this is? Before we get to the wrestling talk, let's throw this out there. There's JFK here. This is hilarious to me right here. So, yeah, somebody sent me this meme earlier. I keep forgetting I have two screens I can use. Thank God. Uh, when when real Democrats and Republicans were running our country, what, we don't need this music anymore. What the hell's going on here? This is driving me nuts. It's like, <laughs> like we don't need this. Maybe like really low, really low. There it is. Okay. All right. When real Democrats and Republicans were running our country, we didn't hate each other. We didn't vote for parties. We voted for ideas. Okay. Well, first of all, we did vote for parties, so that doesn't make any sense. Like, we didn't vote for parties. Then why were there parties? <laughs> why were there parties if we didn't vote for parties? Uh, we voted for ideas that came from both parties. <laughs> so then they, <laughs> then it contradicts itself. <laughs> what is it talking about? I know what it says. We vote. Well, isn't that what you always vote for usually is the ideas that come from the parties? Like, no matter what it is. <laughs> I mean, this is hilarious. Uh, we voted for the ideas that came from the parties. Um, uh, that came from parties that made us a better country. We didn't label ideas as... Uh, parties as racist sexist or un-american um you might be right about that at the time but it's a different time we did what we thought was best for we the people well that's what people are still doing they're still doing things that they think are best for we the people they still are it might be wrong it's wrong but i mean they still people are still doing things that they think are best for the we the people they still think it is they, they are doing things for the best they think they're doing things for the best still it doesn't change um, and accepted the winner as a united country. Yes, we accepted the winner as a united country. Except that's JFK. And uh, didn't they kill JFK because he refused to kill his own people in an attack on the American people? Didn't JFK said, nope, I'm not going to attack our own people. And then mysteriously months later or whatever it is, he die. He gets shot by a magic bullet or whatever it is. I mean, come on, dude. This is the worst meme ever, dude. When real Democrats and Republicans were running our country. Yeah, right. That Like when JFK got elected and you didn't like it so much, you killed him. Okay, that makes sense. This meme sucks. It's one of the worst memes ever. Somebody sent this to me on Twitter and said, if only we could go back to those days, Joe. Yeah, what, the days where they killed the president because they didn't agree with him? Um, I, li- I like JFK, though. I do like JFK. I mean, any guy that takes a bullet because he refused to attack his own people. Or maybe it's the Marilyn Monroe thing. I don't know. Whatever the case is. Something weird there. We could talk about that all day long. No doubt about it. But we're going to talk about wrestling tonight. 
And that's mostly what we're going to focus on. Uh, I'm going to delete that tweet only because that's not the tweet. I didn't really convey the tweet right. I, You know me with typing. I, I, I write stuff the worst, dude. I go on Facebook. I try to write a joke. And the next thing you know, I'm in a fight with like 700 people. You know what I mean? And I'm like, no, that's not what I meant. And then they're like, sure it isn't, you racist. Or sure it isn't, you SJW snowflake. And it's like, I, what the hell? Um, anyway. Um, what's up, guys? I'm not playing a game yet, but I am going to be joining uh, somebody in a few for Warzone. A little Warzone tonight, I think. And then... Um, yeah, we are taking calls. Uh, Jacob Fuego, whoever, we are taking calls. I am taking calls tonight. 339-226-6610, you know the number. And if you don't know the number, I'm going to get you the number right now. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. I got a bit of a headache, though, I got to tell you. In fact, maybe I can get Leah to bring me some medicine. Maybe I can get Leah to bring me some medicine. I don't know if she will, but I'm going to try to ask her. Because I don't want to have to run upstairs. Maybe she can do my bidding for a little bit. I'll see if I can get her to do it, but... It all depends on the mood she's in. And then tonight, Corrupted Podcast with a special guest taking place on Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. I hope you guys come check out the Patreon. It supports all the shows I do. If you're somebody that doesn't like donating live because you're like, I don't do that shit. You expect something back or whatever and you don't think this is enough. Then uh, Patreon, you get 30 hours of bonus content. Stuff you don't hear on YouTube and all these other shows and all these things. Two bucks, five bucks, whatever. You can hear Corrupted tonight for one dollar. Uh, one dollar doesn't, it, it definitely helps. But uh, certainly two, five, ten, we'd love to see that. Can uh, Leah bring you medicine too? No, I don't, I don't know, man. Let me see if I can get her to bring me medicine. Hey, I'm live doing a show. Uh, what do I have to, like, what do I have to do to get you to bring me like two ibuprofen or uh, two whatever that is up there? Although ibuprofen will kill me of corona, won't it? So I'm a little bit worried about that. But you know what? F it. My head hurts too much. I need some. It's from mowing the lawn today is what it is. I got mad headache from mowing the lawn. I mowed the entire lawn today. And whenever I do that, I wore a mask and I just get destroyed, bro. He took a bullet, but go to F Maryland. I say he came out winning. He got to F Maryland. I say he came out winning. Yeah, you might be right. He got to bang Marilyn Monroe. He had great speeches about, um, you know, keeping uh, the country equal and, and just great stuff. So, yeah, you, may, you know, maybe maybe he did come out winning. Maybe he did. Why wasn't the bar fight at Friendly Tap? Uh, that's a good point because they were down in Florida. Uh, they were down in Florida, man. Um, the thing about it was it was better than anything on Extreme Rules. It was better than the horror show. It was better than Extreme Rules. It was the type of bar fight that we asked for. I, you know, I got to give WWE some credit because we have buried WWE. And by the way, we're going to get into the UFO stuff. We're going to get into the Regis thing real quick. We're going to touch on Regis Filman. Rest in peace to Regis Filman. Um, I knew him better from Regis and Kathy Lee and that type of stuff. As opposed to um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I never really saw that uh, show. In fact, I never watched an entire episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Never watched an entire episode. So, I don't know. What did Jesse just send me? Jesse, what did you just send me? Leah's not responding. I'm sorry about last night. Been hurting a lot. Um, no, I, I don't know, man. J Jesse just messaged me. Nah, man, you're good, dude. It was just a whole bunch of things. Uh, you're okay, man. We should do more after darks and stuff. Uh, hit me up tonight if you want to call in for a few or whatever. You know what I mean? You're good, man. You know I love you. Kisses. You're all right. Too many camera cuts in the bar fight. Yeah, that was the one. Uh, you want to be critical of the bar fight? I'll be critical of the bar fight there. I didn't like the overcutting, the typical WWE overcutting and things like that. I agree. By the way, me and Jake had a bet about how many glasses would get broken. I don't, I don't remember if it was Raw or if it was SmackDown or... Uh, might have been out of nowhere. I don't I don't remember where it was that we decided we were going to bet on it. I think I said that there would be five glasses broken or something like that. I don't think I said more than five. I think Jake said, he said like something crazy. He said like 12 or 16 or something crazy was going to go down. I don't know. But um, 
I don't know, man. I'm in a big fight war with my some somebody on Facebook posted that all like basically that all cops are bad or something, and I was like, man, not all cops are bad. You know, that's ridiculous. You know, I mean, come on. And like, dude, I was attacked by like seventy different people who all look like they have tattoos and colored hair, which, by the way, I had in high school and years ago. And hell, I'd dye my hair blue right now. I don't care or pink or whatever. I don't even care about that. I think it's funny, but uh, just weird, man. Just a bunch of people that are like, you know, you're the problem with the world. You're a scumbag, pathetic piece of garbage. And it's like, what? Well, Jesus, what? Because I said not all all the cops are 100 percent bad. The hell? Like, uh, am I really that bad of a person? Because I mean, what do you want me to say? That they all, like, everybody is horrible. I mean, like, people are crazy, dude. I'm really sick of that stuff. I think that it's, it's a bunch of BS. Anyway. Yeah, so I thought the overcutting and stuff like that, that was too much. Um, WWE's been heavily criticized for putting Jeff Hardy in this position to begin with. Um, you know, Matt Hardy's not happy about it. We're going to talk about Matt Hardy in a few minutes, too. Matt Hardy's going to become real Matthew Hardy. He's going to be real, and he's not going to be broken anymore. He's not going to be all these characters. He's going to throw those away. Which I think is stupid. I think they really should have kept going with the broken thing. And, and it seems like he said, like, it's not working. And I guess, you know, there were some people that didn't like it. But I I don't know what's going on, man. But I, I was loving it. The stuff with Jericho and the drone and how far they were going with it. I don't know why they pulled back. I mean, they, maybe they saw something I didn't see. That I know there's like a, a my, like kind of a minority of people that, that don't like it at all. Like they don't like any of that fantasy stuff, but I think it's I think it's good shit. And I I don't know, man. I tell him Vince McMahon, I think it's some good shit. And I'm gonna turn my filter on now because I feel like uh, it's hard to breathe down here. But let's see if uh, the wife did not respond, so that's probably a no. But I tried to get myself help. Uh, I should have obviously taken the stuff before I went live, right? I mean, that's let's be honest. Super chat. Party. Yo. Scotland is in the house. Let's go, JCS Army. Scotland. Fire, fire, fire. It's f- right. I appreciate it, Vince McMahon's nuts smell like money. Um, You know, and if Connor was here, I would have him do his best um, Drew McIntyre impression for us all. Um, Because there's no, uh, no fan, says Josh Thomas. Yeah, you might be right. I mean, maybe they thought, like, hey, let's try it, and without the fans... But see, I think that they could have done all this stuff with the broken Hardy house and the and the they could have filmed things in the house or behind the scenes with the you know with the ridiculous over the top broken gimmick. So I feel like this was the perfect time to utilize this gimmick, and it would be more acceptable now. So that's that's really why I I feel like they should have kept doing it. So I I, I don't know, man. By the way, shout out to Hector Gutierrez for being a member and getting that green badge in the picture of Leah. Steve Kalan, thank you. As well, what's up to the people that are members and became members? And you might have subbed on Twitch, too. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the fight was in Florida, not at the Friendly Tap, unfortunately. Uh, they're all on steroids, says Jacob Fuego. What did Devious Dave Rose say? Jim Fetzer broke down the JFK assassination. The footage of the kill was altered, and it's verifiable. We could talk all day about that. Probably, you know. Most celebs dying now are not by chance. Yeah, most likely. Sounds like too many leftists. Yeah, that's probably what, what we're dealing with. Um, Esky, thank you. I don't know if there's any oh, shit. Nice. Leah brought me relief. No, this is perfect because this has everything in it. It's got acetaminophen, aspirin, and caffeine. Although I guess it doesn't have ibuprofen. But, well, no, you don't take that that. but it's got aspirin. Yeah. 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 It works. Ibuprofen is the best, but, you know, ibuprofen uh, causes, like, swelling in the body and stuff like that, which I think is why it doesn't interact well with COVID, but I'm not a doctor, nor do I know shit about anything. But I sure know how to talk, I'll tell you that. Yeah, COVID causes clotting. And doesn't ibuprofen also kind of contribute to that? I think people who take a lot of ibuprofen, they're... Yeah, they're, and, they're, and your, your organs swell and stuff like that. I don't know, so it's probably something to do with it. But either way, man, everybody out there should be taking your vitamin B. Lots of vitamins. Oh, yeah, you know what? Just bring it back up. Yeah, I need to buy a medical cabinet. It's like $100. If I, you know, if I get one, I might put it down in, in my room. Because then it's away from the... What? 
Yeah, yeah, I could put it in my wall. That way it's away from the kids, but we can get to it. They don't need to be going into it. But I'm gonna, I am gonna. want to put a medical one upstairs for, like, bandages and, like, that in case somebody gets hurt and we're not around or something for some reason. Um, okay, what's up, everybody? How you doing? So we've been having some good, uh, good little conversation here. We'll have some more conversation. Leah be like, drink your meds, you stupid ass. Damn, son. Did Leah bring me fucking Christmas tree? No. I don't think so. Everybody's... Oh, no, that's the wrong, that's the wrong clip. I don't like radical any kind. You know what I mean? I, I'm basically right down the middle. I try to be down the middle of everything, man. I think that pisses everybody off. That's the problem. I understand that, man. Like, you know, just people who always run around saying, hey, peace, man, let's talk about this. Those are the people that always get shot, right? Or they're or beaten up or whatever. And I think that that's what I, tr I I'm always trying to be like that because I'm trying to, like, learn from each side. Like, here's what I think. Sometimes I yell out loud that I think I know what I'm talking about and I don't, you know, either somebody on the this side or that side corrects me or tells me more information that I didn't know before about it that I learned about. So that's really what, you know, drives me to try to learn stuff, the knowledge, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dumb person. I'm a dumb person looking for knowledge, man. I'm a dumb person looking for knowledge. I don't know if I'll have uh, Dave on Corrupted right now, but I will. Uh, he can call in if he wants to. You can only get vitamin B12 through injections, through a pill it almost doesn't absorb in your body. Yeah, real YT, you're right about that. Shit, in fact, I don't know the, I don't know the truth 100% about that, but you're right. Um, you have to take a sublingual. A subling, a sub, sublingual? You need to take it under your tongue, and you need to let it like melt apart like under your tongue, and then kind of swallow it. You don't want to take the whole pill right down. You just go down and go... Pfft. Like your your body and your stomach and stuff will destroy anything that ever before it really gets in you. It will just like and you'll, it'll just go out of your body. You won't even get it. So you need to take a sublingual number one to get any of it. But even when you do that, I get I guess you get like between one to ten percent of the thing anyway. So like it's garbage. So um, yeah, you might you're you're probably right about that about you know getting an injection instead. But you know everything is like that. Everything is like that. Yeah, I, you know, Dave. If he wants to, if he wants to talk to me, he can talk to me. Um, but I don't think. Yeah, like you said, he's too too tired for corrupted. In the background, a clip from cops. Yeah, it's like it's like a it's a message, bro. Um, yeah, I try I try to be open minded, man. I don't know what I'm talking about most of the time. I'm just giving you my opinions on reacting to what I see. I really want people of the right and the left to come together. I want you guys all to kind of come together. But I have no time for the people on the on the right or left who are just like, F this, this is the way it goes, <laughs> that's it, or you're done. I don't like that. I'm not into that, man. But I certainly don't know what I'm saying that much. But I, what I do know is that I want to referee it somehow. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'm always, I've always been like that. I don't think that I always do a good job of that, but I try to. I don't, I don't do the best job of it, but I try to. Uh, placebo. Jokey, you're pretty much right about that. What about um, suppositories? Uh, do I take those orally or do I shove them up my ass? <laughs> you probably get more use out of them up your ass, to be honest, but you might develop some kind of bowel cancer or something like that. Uh, Broken My Hearty is good outside the ring, cinematic skits, promos, and fights. Josh Thomas, I believe that, man. I think this is why people don't like Joe. They want you to pick sides. Yeah, that's the, that is the true. It's... If I could just go gung ho one way, I think people would uh, it, you would be able to gather an, a like minded audience, yeah. But I think people do like the way I think because I think that I think that people do like the way I think because they the people especially the people once they get to know me are like, all right, well, I see what I see what Joe is. and you know I may say a bunch of things that you don't agree with and you'll be like, yeah, that's Joe though he's whatever, and like you can forgive me even though I, I may not be correct about a lot of things. So, or you can educate me. I think it's exciting for me to say things that maybe you hear that you're like, I never thought about it like that. That's interesting. I'm going to look into that. Probably once you do that, you're going to come out knowing more than I am, and you're going to tell me things that I'm going to learn. So that's like what I like. I like the reciprocation of learning and passing things around. Um, I like that idea. You know, I like the idea of being checked and checking 
you know? And checking out your mom. Oh, man. Wait till I get a load of her. We're going to talk more about the bar fight in a minute if you want. Uh, 339-226-6610. The Skype is open. If you want to call on Skype, I will take any calls. We're going to talk about the UFO. We didn't really get to talk about it last night. I brought it up, but, you know, Drew said he had no interest. Jesse laughed at it, like didn't care. Um, But I really do. I'm going to read the comments from the website about the Pentagon. We talked about this a little bit last night. I monetize this, but not a lot. It's crazy stuff, man. We've been talking about this soft disclosure for a long time. But why is the soft disclosure happening? Is it because this is really happening and and this is good? Or is it because they're going to distract us from something else? We don't know. How are you guys doing? I hope you hit that like button down below. Classic Joe. I don't know what you mean, Bradley JB. Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, I'm going to take one more donut. What else we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. A little bit of the bubbly. bubbly. Look at this stuff. Oh, a little bubbly. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. <laughs> Is your mic an easy fix? Uh, I'm assuming oh. it's just a new wire or something. Oh. BTW, thanks for the follow on Twitter. 503, hang on one second. I'll get you on here. Uh, Jag to Panzer, thanks for the $3, man. Yeah, no need to run out and buy me a microphone. No need to drop a bomb or something like that. First of all, I smacked the damn thing last night myself, so it's my own fault. Second of all, I've got four mics, okay? I've got four expensive mics, you know what I mean, that I've collected over the last six years. I've got them. So even if the mic was broken, I got another one. I got another one, and I got another one after that. And even if it got really bad... I I got a sure SMB and a sure uh whatever I got a whatever I got mics don't worry about it and then I got this headset too on top of it so the reason why I'm using this is because I don't want to go get the new XLR cables that are in my closet right now because I've got flooring in there because I'm working on the room um it's just the wire dude it's just the I broke the XLR cables all that broke don't it's fine man I I got like five XLR cables I just gotta plug a new one in it's good to go. Appreciate the concern, though, Jag to Panzer, man. Cheers to you, and thanks for the donation. I got a phone call, though, 503. That means they're local. What's up? Hey, Joe. It's Dan and Cora. Oh, what the hell? What's going on? I didn't know you guys had a local we're, number. Are you calling from, like, a... What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're in California right now. What the hell are you doing calling from a 503 number? Um, I lived in Oregon before I moved to South Dakota. I get oh, my number. Okay. Yeah, well see, I'm like I need to know these things. I'm always asking. But no, yeah, how's the trek across the country? You guys are driving all over the place. Yeah, we we, we, we stopped at Vegas, then we then we went and stopped at Oregon to pick up my wife's stuff, and now we're heading back to Vegas again. Hell yeah. Wait a minute. So you wait a minute. Oh, you went to Oregon and to get that and then you went back to Vegas. So how's Vegas right now? Because that place is like probably pretty Pretty quiet. Uh, yeah, we, we, that, we, it's actually pretty cool. We, 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 we went with my brother Dave that you said happy birthday to, and we left him in Vegas. He's been there for a week, and he's been, he's been exploring so that he can tell us where the good stuff is. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, they. Um, how long are you going to stay He's winning there? money and losing it and losing it and winning it and back and forth. <laughs> but you know what? That's fun as long as you're not just losing money. Like, that's... Because when I remember I, I walked out of a casino one week, I won five hundred dollars, but by the time I left the casino, I had zero, and it was like, well, I didn't, I didn't win anything, but I mean, I, I didn't come ba- back with anything extra, but I didn't lose anything, so, you know, and if you only lose, if you plan on losing two hundred, three hundred dollars, and you go in, and you come out not losing two to three hundred, but you didn't win anything either, really, because you won it back. Well, I mean, you had fun at least. Yeah, that's that's what we thought too. So, yeah, he's been there for a week all by himself while we've been packing stuff in Oregon. So we're about how far away? About eight eight hours from him now. We'll be there in about eight nine hours. Now, have you so guys do you the- do you guys do this regularly? Have you done this before? First time ever. Oh wow! Okay, I was gonna say, how does it compare or whatever? But I mean, what is it like out there though with the COVID stuff? Are you having any? You seeing any differences or people you know, less people? What's it, going on? In in Vegas, it's like I, 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 that's the safest place in the world. If you if you if you, if you got masks on, you got you got sanitizer. They check your temperature. Is it really the, like the is it? Ever. Wait a minute. Is it really the safest place in the world right now? I mean, like, wait a second. <laughs> the hell? Well, I mean, as far as as far as wearing masks and stuff, I meant. Oh, and they're be- sanitizing like crazy. And keeping every other machine blocked off, and 
I mean, if you, if you want to go do something fun, it's a pretty safe place to be, in my opinion. The, the fucked up part is Oregon's supposed to be all mask happy and liberal capital of the world. Nobody wears fucking masks there right now. They only require it when you go inside buildings. And well, it's it's very bizarre. Probably in Colorado, they got that shit locked down. Everybody in Colorado is wearing a mask like it's... Well, it's cra- and then I, I, I everywhere that- else, no one. I think the reason why it's probably kind of safe is because they're they're they don't they want they're happy to be open, right? Like they're just so happy to be open that they're like, fine, everyone wears masks, that's cool. We want to be open. In fact, they have to stay open. People that are criticizing Las Vegas, um, if they were to close down Las Vegas, the entire economy, in Nevada and especially Las Vegas, would just die. It would be a hell on earth situation if they were to close that down and i know that sounds messed up and i know that like you know you got to take precautions and e- even if 10 percent of the population were to die it would be worse for them economically to shut down so it's better for them to say we're going to open up anyway play at your own risk and the people that don't want to deal with that move away or get out of here uh because it would be worse if they shut down and i'm liberal but i'm, I'm i agree like they can't shut down their their, their whole economy just would die. Then again, what are we doing over here? I don't know. But also, Vegas's numbers are up right now, so there's 900 cases a day, so it certainly is not the safest place, but maybe versus population, it's... I don't know. It's 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 okay. Just don't, uh, you know, just don't stand in front of people and let them breathe in your face, I guess. I don't know. Well, if, if they don't wear a mask, we, had, we've had, we saw a couple of people, they didn't wear a mask, and security grabs them and literally throws them out the door. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, it's pretty funny. I mean, listen, listen. I mean, the masks. We all know a hundred. They don't protect you a hundred percent. They don't even protect you half. But they protect something. You know, they 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 do limit something. When two people are wearing masks, it does defer some of the stuff. But it can't say. But people that think it does all, it stops everything are crazy. But people that think it does nothing at all, they're crazy. It does something. It just doesn't do a ton. But I mean. It also reminds you to kind of keep away and don't be screaming into someone's face. I don't know, but I, I hope you have fun. I hope it's good, and it's not that bad. 900 a day, I mean, there's people in Florida still going to things, and they're like 12,000 a day, so, I mean, I mean, you And then know. South Dakota is the, the anomaly because the governor won't let anybody get tested. So she's what? waiting till after the Sturgis bike rally oh and my the God. state fair. And then all of a sudden, she's probably going to start testing, and we're going to realize South Dakota is a big hotbed. But you can't get tested if you wanted to. It's oh. really impossible to get a test there. So South yeah. Dakota. Uh, let me see. South Dakota. Let me just go look at their Very numbers. Republican, Trump thumping. Gun. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. They I mean. Um, to acknowledge COVID. Yeah, they look like they're. They're not too bad right now, although, like you said, maybe they're having testing issues or they don't test a lot, probably. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of people, too, that, that, ha- that, that have had it and have it that don't get tested. They just ride it out. They go, they just stay home and ride it out. They're not going to the hospital. They don't want that thing shoved in their face. They just ride it out at home, you know? I mean, there's a lot of people that have yeah. it that didn't get tested. Um, you know, I find the truth is somewhere in the middle like everybody. I don't think that there's a need mm-hmm. to flip out and whatever. But there's also no need to spit at people and tell them you're not wearing a mask and be a <laughs> psycho. Like, what the fuck is, what is that about? I don't understand that. So. And speaking of masks, we love that you have masks. As soon as we get to Vegas, we're ordering ours. Hell yeah. You're so fucking awesome. Well, you know, so, so many people asked me to get masks. And so I said, all right, I'm going to do it now today. And then I did it, and half the people's comments were great, finally. And then the other half were like, you're buying into these sons of bitches. Like, and I was like, nah, dude, it's just a mask. They existed like 10 years ago. They <laughs> still exist now. I'm not buying into the left-wing conspiracy. I'm just, they're just masks. You don't have to buy them or wear them. Or you can wear them even, right. if, even if you don't even believe in any of this stuff and you think it's the government making it all up or whatever, you can still buy the mask and wear it just to, for the hell of it. I mean, it's just it, it's just a mask. Mm-hmm. Are you not going to wear a seatbelt, too, because they tell you that's a law? I mean, what are we doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we won't keep you too long. We just want to say hi and thank you for the content. Your shows have really made all the difference on our driving, and it's been fantastic. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you guys uh, are having a good time. Uh, Monetize This was a little weird last night, but uh, <laughs> we'll get a better one next we, week. We, we, 
We just finished it, and I have to be honest, when you turned off the Discord call, yeah. I thought somehow our my phone rewound the show <laughs> or changed it to a different show suddenly. Mm-hmm. So I had to check before you even mentioned you shut the Discord off, like, oh, okay, good. We didn't lose the show. And it was awesome the way the wheel ended up. That was pretty dramatic at the end. Yeah, it was. It was, it was a lot of fun. I like flipping out. I don't do it that much anymore, but it was fun last night. Yeah, the Discord, everybody was talking over each other because of Discord. You know, poor Jesse, he's got a bad connection. So that's become kind of frustrating because the poor guy has a bad connection. So he doesn't always, I don't think he knows what he's doing sometimes. And maybe he was like hopped up on something and he just splurts out over the donations. And I'm like, oh my God, I got to play it again. And I think El Gallo was talking about having cancer or something. And I was trying to hear what it was. And I was like, oh my God, is that real? And then, and then blah, blah, blah. But uh, you know what? That happens. Er- it, you know, every other episode of Monetize This now seems to be crazy or good or crazy. But either way, I think the first couple hours were fun, and the last uh, little bit was. So, you know, it happens. We'll come back with better stuff. And you guys have a good road trip, vacation. Stay safe. You will. Love you both. We will, we'll put ten bucks. We'll put ten bucks in a machine, and if we win, we'll donate it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I hope you win a million dollars because then you'll be the sponsor of the show. <laughs> All right. All guys. right. Take care, bro. Later, guys. See you, Joe. They're living the dream, man. Being able to just go to Vegas right now. By the way, what's up with all the... Um, by the way, this isn't a party thing. Remember, I'm on your side, guys. Left wing, right wing, I- I'm with you. But what's with all the left wing kids who are in colleges who are like, F you, it's real, I'm going to wear a mask, and F you. What's with all these people going to parties? They're all going to parties. The people that are... T- Listen, I'm no Trump supporter, but... All the people tweeting about Trump, the son of a bitch doesn't wear a mask, why didn't you wear a mask? Now, I gave Trump shit. I said, dude, if I was the president, I'd be wearing one to show everybody, like, here's what to do. And I don't care if you disagree with me on that, that's fine. But, what's with all these people who screamed at him about the mask stuff and about using science and all these other things? What's with all these people going to parties? They're all at parties, I see their Facebooks. Their Facebooks are full of impeach him, he's a scumbag liar. And then they're at parties without masks on, with like 30 kids in a pool. Aren't you the ones that are fucking telling everybody about how dangerous this is? Now you're at a party. You're selfish idiots. Everybody's a selfish idiot. Everybody's a double standard selfish idiot. People are going on vacations right now and shit. What are you doing? And then the next thing you know, they're they're posting about, about, you know, the like what? They're posting like, you must listen to Dr. Fauci. You must listen to him. What is Trump doing? He's getting us killed. And then you're at a party without a mask on in front of 30 kids. Oh, none of my friends had it. What? Now science is out the window because you want to hang out with your friends and get fucked? What the hell's going on in this country? What the hell? By the way, the vaccine ain't going to help anybody. You're just going to get it again. We need to create a a cure when you go to the hospital. We need when somebody is at the point of like, <gasps> we need to create that that we need to create the drug that helps them right then and there and saves their life then, instead of having to inject something every six months to year to keep you away. No, we need we need the cure in the hospital. Hey, this guy's going critical. He needs a ventilator. Fuck that. <laughs> oh, I'm better again. My body fights it. Now I get out of the hospital. No need to put him on a ventilator. No need to vaccinate the guy every year. Get rid of those two theories. It's stupid. It's 2D thinking. We need to think three-dimensionally. Just like they did in the bar fight. We are going to get back to wrestling. If you guys want to get back to wrestling, we can get back to wrestling. I'm not, and uh, once again, not preaching to you guys. I am stupid Joe Cronin on my show talking about stuff, rambling on about things that I probably wrong about many of these things. I'm just spewing out my thoughts. Feel free to tell me if I'm wrong. You won't be banned. You won't be blocked. None of that stuff. None of it. Um, you won't be banned. You won't be blocked. You None of that stuff. Fight with me all you want. Talk to me. Give me your ideas. I'm down here. This is the Joe Cronin Show. It's not just wrestling. I'm doing everything tonight. I'm talking about whatever you want before Corrupted. If you guys want to support my show tonight, you'll see it up top. Patreon. It's a free app on your phone. There's free stuff available for you. It downloads to your phone in audio, the YouTube links, everything. We're live all the time on Patreon. There's a bunch of shows. Me and my wife's podcast, if you haven't heard those, there's like 18 of them. There's a ton of stuff on here. Uh, We have 333 patrons. And the $25 producers are vital. You guys are friggin' awesome. Without you, we wouldn't be here. Dollar patrons and $2 patrons are awesome, and we need you as well. And I hope you enjoy the content. 
But $25 producers, you guys are saving the day. Um, I don't have any pills to push like Alex Jones or anything like that. Uh, I just have my content on Patreon. Uh, interesting comments in the chat. I'm going to try to get to some of those in a few. Yeah, TikTok is very dangerous, but, you know, we just, we do it. I- I'm on TikTok. The reason is because I feel I got to be a part of everything to be part of social media and all these other things to be part of my show and what I do. And so, but I know that, man, I could have identity theft, you know what I mean? And they could use me to get to some guy and have his family murdered because he once said something about the Chinese government and now his cousin lives in America and they just wipe out the whole family, all because of the TikTok app. It's unbelievably scary what's going on with that. But nobody really believes it, because it's so funny. It's like, TikTok, hey! And you just kind of ignore it, because it's so like, ah, it's TikTok, come on, dude, What are you, you're crazy. Yeah, we were crazy with Epstein, too, weren't we? Now he's not here anymore. Um, Super Jack, Super Jack. Did you put the questions for Corrupted? Oh, no, I did not put them up. The questions for Corrupted are going to go up in a few minutes on Patreon. So they're going to go up in a few minutes, Villain. Villain, thank you for mentioning that. Thank you for reminding me. But uh, they're not posted yet. They will be posted in a little bit. They are going up soon. Villain, thank you so much, my friend, uh, for the dono, man. How you been? Unknown caller, hello. Unknown caller, Oh my god, another Russian. How you doing, my friend? Comrade, how you doing? I love Moscow. It's either Russian or some kind of Middle Eastern. I don't know. They sound similar to me sometimes. And the bo- you know, the Boston bombers uh, spoke it, so, you know, I'm not really sure what you were saying exactly, but I'm sure something to do with a jihad on me or Here something. We go. I don't know. About to get it, man. Here we go, about to get it, man. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, 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 no. Joe, what a weekend at work. Let me tell you, we accidentally served a Jewish lady pork, and I have never been cursed out like that before. Oh, no. I'm so old school. Oh, no, dude. Oh, man. You know, I was thinking about that exact thing yesterday because Ben Shapiro was on Joe Rogan. And by the way, Joe Rogan has been killing it, man. He has been killing it. I know that maybe some people like Joe Rogan, maybe some people aren't the biggest fans of the guy. I don't live or die by the guy, but he's got a great podcast usually, and you know that, for years. But, man, he had uh, Ben Shapiro on the other day, and he was explaining his Jewish culture stuff, and I'm like, man, that must be crazy to have to go through all that. But uh, amazing discipline to be able to do that, you know, when you have that sort of religious beliefs. I definitely admire the discipline and ability to follow uh, certain beliefs and things like that, um, like many uh, Jewish people do. But I would never let any book or something control me like that ever, in my opinion. But I do respect the fact that you're able to go through those things. So, yeah, man, that must have been embarrassed. I would have just felt... I know that some people would have been like, eh, F you, deal with it, mistakes happen. You know, I agree, too. Mistakes happen. I'm so old school, and, you know. But I would feel so destroyed by that. I would, oh, my God, dude. Like, I would, I'm the, dude, I would feel horrible. I don't know why. I shouldn't, you shouldn't really. It's just whatever. But I would just, man, eat the pork, Christ killer. (laughs) Dave Rose. Devious Dave Rose in the chat, dude. Oh, my God, dude. Eat the p- <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god, dude, eat the pork Christ killer. <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> Freaking die, dude. Oh my god. Why don't you call TJ the N-word again, Dave? No, I'm just kidding. Um, but no, it's uh what am I trying to say? Uh yeah, okay, so Ben Shapiro was hilarious, was was really good. Uh, Bob Saget was really good last week or two. I think he just had Graham Hancock on again, maybe. I don't know. He was good. Um, then he had another guy on. He was good. The last two weeks, Rogan has been crushing it with his guests. So, unbelievable. Unbelievable stuff. Let me go back to the donos. Good shit. I got a pee. Got? I got a bottle right oh, here. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's it. Bubbly? A little bit of the bubbly. This stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. So the Pentagon says they have off-world vehicles. Do these people think we are idiots like we do? T already know that our government is retarded like Tommy's mommy. 
Yeah, I mean, you wonder what they're doing with them or no or whatever, A.J. Adams. I don't know. Why would they come out and say the Pentagon has off-world vehicles, though? But remember, the Pentagon is the same place that you can fly commercial planes into, and they don't see it coming. Remember that? Remember when, remember when the Pentagon didn't see the commercial flights coming into their building? The, the most... What, what, somebody called it the other day. Somebody said this. I think it was on a movie. It was a movie. They were going to break in. Oh, I know what it was. It was X-Men. The movie X-Men. I mean, maybe, maybe it worked because it was the period. But in the movie X-Men, um, Days of Future Past, which is the best X-Men movie ever. I'm peeing this ball right now. Oh, you guys are listening to me pee right now. Oh, oh I got this jug right here. Oh, my God, it's good. Yeah, in, X, in uh, Days of Future Past, they're like, you're telling me we're going to break into the most secure place in the world. The most under whatever security place in the world, the Pentagon. Da, da, da. And then I just think of a commercial plane. After, after the government already knows that something's going on with planes, the government already knows this, and then they fly into the Pentagon, and it, there's nothing happens. No jets take off and shoot it down. No jets get ready to shoot it down. No warnings go out. And, you know, it's just like, are you kidding me, dude? That doesn't happen unless you let it happen. That doesn't happen unless you let it happen, or you never could stop anything and we're idiots. That also is the other possibility. The other possibility is we're not safe at all and we're idiots and we're not really protected whatsoever, which could be the possible answer. It's either that or they did it on purpose or they let it happen on purpose. You're telling me the Pentagon just anybody can just just oh just fly right into it. Who cares? They don't have they don't have a radar going around it. They don't have a airspace radar. They don't have uh, missiles. They don't have anything protecting it at all. They just you go right into it, kind of like the White House when like. When 150 to 300 protesters show up at the White House, there's no like electronic devices to take people out or anything like that. Unless you have soldiers guarding the White House, you can just walk right through the grass and just storm the White House if you want. That's that's what happened almost. We almost saw that. You know, they couldn't really protect that. And then until they brought in the entire army, the federal state troopers and all those people. Um, so maybe we can't. Maybe they can't protect it. I, I don't know. What was the what the hell am I saying now? What <laughs> I lost my train of thought already, man. I'm having a crazy uh, night right now. I'll tell you. Yo, Robbie Hyde is here, and you're reminding me that baseball is back. The Yankees, the Dodgers, and the Red Sox—they're all tearing it up right now. Joe, thank you so much for sending people to my stream the other night. Some of the JCS army was there too. Ended up getting 3k views. Hell yeah, brother. Again, thank you. Question. Which camera would you recommend for live streaming? I'm thinking Sony A5. Let me write that down because I'm not familiar with that one. Sony A5100. I'll take a look at it, Robbie Hyde. I just use a Logitech, bro. I'd go Logitech 920 to begin. Uh, then you can play with the HD settings and things like that. Robbie Hyde, thank you, man. I'm glad you reminded me that baseball is back. And by the way, Robbie, uh, dude, we got to do a podcast about baseball. We got we to gotta do it, man. About sports in general, about whatever. So, Robbie, man, we got to hook up, dude. We got to do that podcast. I'd love to get you on board. I really like you, uh, and I like your channel. And congratulations on 3,000 views because you killed it, dude. There, there are people that don't even know how to do that to this day. And what you did was great. Like, really, you're brand, like, just brand new with everything, and, like, you did that? That was crazy, dude. You did a great job, man. Yeah, the Cubbies are going good, too, man. I'm, a, I'm definitely a Cubs fan as well. Um, anyway, appreciate it, Robbie. Uh, we are going to get into the UFO stuff in a minute, uh, fully into the UFO stuff in a minute. We've touched on a little bit of this stuff, the bar fight. Like I said, I thought overall success. I still don't like it that much. I didn't like SmackDown that much, but... The bar fight was pretty good. It was better than Extreme Rules. It still has problems. Jake said they would break like 12 or 16 glasses. I said they would break five. And then I said it can't be just that they got thrown into it, you know. It's going to be that they used them and you clearly see the glasses break. Well, 
Of course, the truth lied in the middle. You could see them breaking glasses a ton. So I would say Jake won. I said five glasses that you could clearly see get broken. You know, Jake said clearly 12 or more or something like that. Um, I don't think it was clear, but I could definitely count that they broke more, like at least at least 10 bottles, if not 25 or something. I don't know. So I, I really think Jake gets the win there. I know a lot of people wanted to talk about it, but, you know, Braves fans, Jays fans, what's up there, everybody? Baseball is back. NBA is back. Hockey, I mean, I'm very pumped up about hockey. Hockey's my favorite sport of all of them, so, I mean, we'll definitely talk about hockey later. Super Chat party. Roberto, bravo. Why can't I breathe, G. Floyd? Roberto Bravo with the dollar ninety nine. I don't know. Probably because there's a cop on your neck, Roberto. Probably because there's a cop on your neck. I don't think anybody saw that video and thought that that was not mur like murder, some kind of manslaughter or murder. I don't believe anybody saw that video and thought that that's that's not that bad. You know, no, I I don't know anybody that thought that. Nobody thought that that was okay. Not Dave, not Dave Rose, not anybody else. Nobody. Nobody thought that that was bad. And I love... Yeah, man, uh, hit me up anytime, dude. We got to do more, dude. We got to do more. Don't worry. Don't let one night, you know, bother you. You did good, man. It's my fault for not saying something instead of just freaking. You're good, bro. Just talking to Jesse a little bit. Love you, Jesse, if you're listening. Super Chat Party. Wuhan fly ain't nothing to F with. Mm -hmm. Wuhan, Wuhan. I had about motherfucking five, fifteen, uh, motherfucking eighty drinks tonight. Roberto, thank you for the donation, man. Buenos no jazz. Um, thank you for the Super Chat Party, brother. It's been up, man. Jake wins again. Yeah, I think Jake won again. I agree. Uh, Dave, are you are you in solidarity solidarity with with BLM? With your 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 whole icon has gone black, devious Dave Rose. Are you in solidarity with BLM, dude? Interesting. Yo, the dot speaks. What up, dot? We're gonna be uh, doing corrupted in a little bit, so I'm gonna post corrupted questions in a few minutes, and uh, we are gonna talk about um, the UFO stuff in a minute. I'm just going to let uh, a few more donations go in play here. And what we'll get else to we it. Got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Over 800 bars opened illegally in Texas this weekend. Money makes people take chances. Yeah, AJ Adams. Um, it is true, man. They They feel the pressure of their families, no doubt about it. I mean, look at me, dude. I'm not usually. I don't always go live on Saturdays. I'm, I'm every other once in a while. I mean, I uh, if I feel like I've had a down week or a down night, I I, I have a lot of things on my mind. I'll, I will do extra shows and extra things to make sure that I can afford things. You know what I mean? Um, and be able to pay Super off bills. So, I mean, this isn't party. for me. Going live is not a risk because I'm gonna. Joe, do you realize that COVID kills less than one percent of people that get it? Yes. The average age of death is eighty-two. Yes, uh, Jay Giles, um, I've said this multiple times over, that it's below, like, it's below, it's like 0.60% or something like that. It's just slightly above the flu, right? So, no, yeah, of course I realize it. I've said it a million times. I've actually said it a ton. That it's, yeah, absolutely. Except for when you get above 70, you know, I got a mother who's 70, you know? So, yeah, no, no, you, you don't, don't let it blow things out of proportion for you guys. But, yeah, it's, it's still to be worried about, though. Just turning my uh, filters on in here and my uh, my dehumidifier on because it is eighty percent humidity in here and I can feel it, son. I can feel it. I'm turning. I can go, feel the breathing. It, man, here we go. About to get it, man. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh no! I mean, someone did tell her Jesus died for her sins, so it was okay to eat pork. I've been cooking for fourteen, and she told me learn how to run a fin kitchen. Well, I mean, I would just take her take her anger and, you know, be like, I understand, uh, and tell her that you're, you know, you're going to change things, and this tell her that you're, this experience, like, has really 
you're going to change how things operate because of the experience. And um, you hope that she can forgive you and that God will forgive you or something. And maybe she'll feel bad and then she'll move on, you know? Because after you apologize so many times to people, I start getting angry. When you apologize... By the way, Moss Blaze, shout out to the Sims, Moss Blaze. What up, baby? Um, yeah, after, after, you, after I apologize to someone so many times, it starts getting infuriating when they won't just accept your shit eventually. Like, listen, man, I, I'm sorry that I messed that up. All right, I messed up. And then if somebody doesn't forgive you eventually, it's, it's just kind of like, you know what? Piss off. You know, it was like the time, the one night that I got the, the worst I ever got that night at the bar in South Boston. And I broke that bottle of alcohol across the bar and I went, and glass was everywhere. And the bartender came outside to fight me or whatever and everything. And I basically, I, I sobered up all of a sudden for a second and I was like, dude, I, I'm so, I'm sorry, bro. Like, I'll clean it up. I'll come in there and clean it up right now. I'll clean up every piece, man. Like, let me, let me, let me come and clean it up. I'll do the right thing, man. I apologize, you know. I shouldn't have done that. And I'm telling him that, you know, this is 2010. And the guy's screaming at me, you fucking piece of shit. You're a piece of shit, you motherfucker. I'll kill you. And he's poking me in the fucking chest and he's getting in my face. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I get it, man. I, I, sh I messed up, bro. I'm going to go home or whatever. Or I'll come in and clean it if you want. You know what I mean? Or I'll pay for whatever. I was like, I messed up. And I'm telling him over and over again, like, I'm sorry. Like, I, I shouldn't have done that. I'm pretty hammered. You know, and I'm snap I'm kind of snapping out of my drunkenness a little bit because it was so crazy. You know, you're, you're more aware. And um, he just wouldn't stop, man. He just kept screaming in my face. And I'm like, all right, I get it, bro. And then eventually I snapped, you know what I mean? He's He started bumping me and getting his nose in my face. And finally I said, dude, what are you fucking gay? Are you trying to have sex with me or something? You're rubbing your crotch on me, dude. I like." And then I snapped. I snapped, dude, do you want to fuck me, you midget idiot? Like, And I started... <laughs> and, then, and then the guy beat the shit out of me and threw me in through a car windshield. So, you know... But I get what you're saying. So you got to just kind of take it, take your lashing and be like, I'm going to learn from this. Son. I We messed up, you know, and then it, but if they keep coming at you, like be like, well, what do you want me to do, lady? You want me to kill myself or something? Should I, should I end my life now because I messed this up bad? Or can I learn from this horrific experience and like do a better job in the future for everybody? You know what I mean? I you're you're right to be angry at me. And you I understand this. This is horrible like we have screwed up very badly i've screwed up very badly and but if she doesn't want to leave and she wants to keep screaming at you i mean w you know what do you want lady should you want to cut my my hand off go go get a knife go cut my arms off or something what kind of crap is this man so yeah it's it's one of those things man just just tell her it was chicken yeah you know what tell her it was uh it was your tell her it was your mother's queef meat how about that? <laughs> tell her it was queef meat. What else we got? I don't know what that oh, is. Just a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's you see the video of a fleet of flying saucers flying over the White House at night. It happened in the early 1950s. You see the video of a fleet of flying saucers over the White House? I, You know, I, I haven't seen that yet. I've heard about that, but I haven't seen that yet. AJ Adams. That's a great, great point, though. I mean, dude, we could break each one of these down and talk about them. These are the type of things we used to talk about on Final Frontier News when, when uh, Dave Rose used to be there. Yeah, I've heard about that, though. Definitely something to be, uh, to be studied and talked about. Those were German crafts, says Devious Dave Rose. It could be, man. And there's a lot of stuff about the Nazis and technology that they may have had. And maybe that's why they thought they were so much better than everybody, and maybe that's why they thought they could take over the world. And maybe that's why we had such a vested interest in getting in on that and taking their technology that they found. Um, I deleted the JFK tweet. Uh, yes. It was not typed right. But I'll put it back up. I'm live right now. I don't know if you know that, Takeda Warrior. Shout out to you and everybody who retweeted this stream. Uh, what's up to the community, man? How you guys doing tonight? All right, we're going to get into the UFOs in a minute, man. I know you guys want to talk about the UFO stuff. We talked about it for a second on Monetize This, and it was nowhere near nothing. So we're going to get into it tonight. And a little bit uncorrupted, but again, Drew wasn't into it. 
I don't know how much our special guest is going to be into it, so we'll see what happens on Corrupted Podcast tonight at 1 a.m. Questions going up soon. Super Chat Party. Daniel-san. Just one 100 and you've turned in sup, dog. Oh, shit. Just one 100 in the UFC. Nice, brother. That's sick, bro. Why are we getting um? Why are we getting duplicates? Are we getting uh, duplicate donos? I don't know, bro. Wolfenstein almost happened. Yeah, bro. <laughs> uh, Daniel, son, thanks for the donation, man. How you doing, brother? Uh, dude, Wolfenstein was one of my favorite games back in the day on uh on a Mac. I had an Apple or a Mac. I had, no, I had a Macintosh. I had a Macintosh computer, nineteen ninety seven. Um, we had a Tandy 1000 in the 80s. Then we had a, um, I think we might have had some kind of Dell or Tandy in the early 90s. Then we had an Apple II for a second. Then we had a, a Macintosh. My dad worked for Raytheon, I think, and a couple other companies. So we had a computer back in the day. Remember the computer when we used to print stuff out back in the 80s? Like, you know, it was like 1988, 1989. And I'd be sitting in the living room, and they'd be printing stuff out. And, you know, the printer would be like, gank, 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 gank. and like the the printer would, you know, the printer would be feeding out whatever you were printing. And the thing was like, shh, it was typing the lines, and it had that scrolling paper that that had to hook into the the pieces with the holes in it, you know, and and it would, gank, 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 and it would be loud as shit going through the house. But I uh, know this was 1997 or 1998. We had a uh, Macintosh, and um, I remember Star Trek, the screensaver. I don't know why, but uh, the Star Trek screensaver, I loved it. And then the other thing that I really enjoyed was the uh, Wolfenstein 3D. And then even earlier than that was Doom. Back when you had Doom on the old uh, other PC, and you had the joystick, and you'd go around with the joystick shooting stuff with the joystick. 1994. Might have been 1996. Yeah, printers never worked right, by the way. Printers never worked right. They always have a problem. They always have a sinking problem or an alignment problem or an ink problem or something like that. You still have one of those printers? I wish I had one. My mother sold my father's Tandy 1000, unfortunately, which sucks because I really love that. They also had an Altair um the original computer it used to just flip the switches and it was like the first ever computer and it was so amazing man my dad we had one of those and that got sold too and i was like no like years later i was like where wait, wait what happened to the computers and my mom was always oh, sold them or whatever and i was like what dude some guy made out on a yard sale some guy probably bought the tandy for a hundred bucks probably bought the altair for like 50 bucks i mean the thing's probably worth five thousand dollars crazy i've told that story a million times before and it's just that's just depressing yeah super chats are on super chats are on down below if you guys want to do that or become a member down below sign up on that see if it's working if you want to feel free to do that otherwise donos let's go over to the uh let's go to the deal though we talked about this plenty but Here we go. Not made on this earth. We talked about this a little bit last night on Monetize This, but we really didn't get to talk about Jack. And by the way, uh, phone, phone lines will be open the rest of the show as well, just like always. Um, not made on this earth. Well, it looks like Dave Rose wants to be on here too, so let's throw uh, Dave on. I'm going to read this and go over this, and we'll have Dave... Here as well, it looks like. Brother from another mother with the supporting BLM with the black dot. It's <laughs> what's up, Dave? Hey, what's up? When last I we thought started... I'd uh, jump in because there's a lot of uh, misinformation going out there about this. Okay. But I was just going to wait until you were done reading to. Okay. Yeah, speak. we can stop me, give your input. I'll give mine, and which is limited. I'll admit my 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 information is all reactionary. 
as it usually is with me. And uh, it sounds like you've already taken a little bit of a deep dive into it. So, you know, we'll figure it out. Not made on this earth. Top secret Pentagon UFO task force reportedly expected to reveal some findings, which we knew was coming because we've been talking about a soft, uh, what do we call it? A soft... Uh, disclosure. The soft disclosure for five years, I want to say, that that we've been mentioning. I mean, like every people have been mentioning that for years before anything, but I've only been talking about it for the past three to five years. Um, so we're going to find out what this is about. Now, real quick before we read about it, what do you think? Do you think that this is a distraction and that's why they're going to do this? Or is this honest and they're really I, revealing it because they people want to know? It's It's absolutely a distraction. And it's actually been called out and, and sort of predicted and, and laid out by multiple people from multiple different uh, groups and, and associations, uh, political leanings and stuff, and people who are just whistleblowers who have just straight out come and said, I know the plan. It was told to me. I saw the documents. Uh, you know, I've been entrusted with this information and I can't just uh, hide it. So without, you know, going into a fucking hour spiel as to you know, all the, the details behind that. Yes, I do believe in specifically coming now. It is a distraction. That's why I thought it was so important for me to speak about it. Is this a, a, is this a scare tactic dump because of the Epstein stuff? Um, it could be many things, but it does look like it's an attempt to specifically try to distract from the, the, the child trafficking. That's the big one that everyone is just panicking to try to cover up. So whether it be trumping up new charges against Trump, no pun intended, or trying to scare people with a, a potential second wave of uh, coronavirus or this new swine flu that they're supposedly talking about, um, you know, the, 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 you know, the alien thing, uh, this is just another, um, you know, again, an attempt to sort of distract and utilize fear. Now I, I put a, a, a link in the chat there, oh. um, of Skype, which is the video that they were referring to in 1952. There was a flyover of, uh, dozens of crafts for several days in July, actually, which is very, uh, synchronistic since we are in July and, um, these crafts basically ran away from all the jet fighters that were scrambled towards them. Nothing could catch them. Nothing could touch them. Uh, and they, they, they made a show of force. And if you look into this, um, a lot of people do discuss this, but this is that uh, breakaway civilization that consists of the Nazis that left uh, Germany and established themselves under uh, Antarctica and may have potentially allied with some sort of alien force. So these are the individuals that are that that uh, pushed off uh, what was called uh, Project um, High Jump, which was supposedly scientific into um, um, Antarctica, but was really an invasion force to try to take over this last remaining group of holdovers from the, the Nazi regime. And they, they got their asses kicked, they, they limped away, and Forrestal, General Forrestal, who was in, um, sorry, Admiral, Admiral Forrestal, who was involved in this, um, he tried to come out and, and explain, like, they've got these crafts that they can do these sorts of things. And soon after he came out and publicly said this, he supposedly committed suicide by jumping out of the, uh, you know, the, the window of a, a very high, uh, a very tall um, hospital. Um, when supposedly his room was locked down and he was fully under uh, observation and stuff. So, Do you think it's possible that w there are no aliens, but that there was an advanced civilization living on Earth uh, 12,000, 20,000 years ago, and that a cat catastrophic event happened on Earth, and these are some of the vehicles left behind that were intact because of what they were made of, still on the planet Earth, and people have been recovering them for years and there's kind of a race to uncover these things and uh, maybe that that's where they're coming from and there are no aliens specifically but these are us our technology that had been lost years ago and they have been found for instance like in south america where they found uh where they said there were all these cities once upon a time the settlers went and looked there was nothing to be found but then now nowadays years later we have found that there were these cities but that within a hundred years 
plant life and growth had taken place and covered the entire thing up, but it is there now. We previously thought it wasn't there. Imagine what would be missing after 10,000 or 12,000 or 15,000 years. Maybe these are crafts that um, were from planet Earth originally anyway, or that we had some kind of travel. I mean, I'm just throwing this out there, not saying that that's what this is, just... Well, uh, you, you hit on a lot of good points. A, uh, I don't believe that one excludes the other in regards to alien civilization, but we can exclude entirely discussing alien civilization altogether What we, when I will bet my life at the fact that, yes, there were a, uh, ancient civilizations existing on this planet that had technology that we still don't even understand, technology that was able to create some of the... Um, uh, sites that still exist today that we can't replicate that have technology that um, we can't even grasp and yet they were able to mold stone as if it was clay and all these alignments when supposedly humans weren't uh, knowledgeable and were just basically knuckle dragging cavemen that they were able to an, an, um, align them so well specifically to the seasons, which then allows for a calculation of time, which again proves civilizational understandings. And then from that is when you gain ideas and understandings of harvesting, because obviously you got to feed the people and time, um, how to um, – basically tell the changing of the the seasons or you know how the astrology goes the different houses and so forth so how how basically a civilization which i've always postulated and you were getting onto that too a civilization uh, you know for example humans that survived a cataclysm that uh, the supposed gods established you know sites like stonehenge or the pyramids that embedded in them they had sizes that provided calculations, for example, through its measurements about, say, for example, the diameter of the earth, as you can find with the, the Great Pyramids. Or, for example, um, I'm trying to think here, the, there's um, the, 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 the Great Sphinx, for example, in Egypt, right. where it aligns perfectly with um, the Leo constellation back at 12,500 B.C., um, you know the 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 Aztecs. Uh, it, there's there's so much that we could discuss, and it's clear that a civilization that spanned the world existed, because uh, you find all these ancient sites embedded in stone. So when it comes to the UFO stuff, it's clear that um, the the people, the ancient people, discussing the gods in the flying um, vehicles, were speaking much more truth than we give them credit for. Not only that, there's pro we don't know this for true. We're just throwing. I'm throwing more things out there. In fact, I'm throwing too much out there because I'm we're getting all over the place. But there's the ability. There's also the possibility that a lot of these um, that a lot of these things existed before the people got there. That, that, that certain groups of people and civilizations didn't make some of these things. It was already there, and they modeled their society around these things that they considered godlike or signs or things like that. Um, Can when you an actual, give any examples or um, what you're referring to? Well, maybe? Say, say like in Egypt, you know, some of the pyramids and some things like that. A lot of times, I feel like they say that they're more dated, and there's things that they find out about them. And it's not that they necessarily built them themselves or all of them. It was more like they found these things and then they tried to replicate them and, and change them into something different that they really weren't originally meant for. Oh, so you're referring to structures as opposed to actual craft? Right, right. But and but okay. similar to the crafts. You find crafts that were there, and then you utilize them. Like, and if no, this well, is, well, go ahead. No, I was going to say true that, like, yeah, you are recognizing that. Yes, as civilizations have come upon, like, primitive civilizations have come uh, upon the the ruins of ancient civilizations, and said clearly, gods lived here. Right. So let's try to emulate and uh, return to the glory that they had before, and, and and try to use the same styles and so forth. So yeah, you can see. No, that that's definitely provable. You can see that in multiple cultures around the world, even cultures like um, in East, uh, Easter Island. It's clear that the, the ones that currently live there really uh, established themselves there after, um, you know, clearly a civilization that existed there. And it's very interesting that, uh, for example, the, the Vimanas, which are ancient Hindu scripts written in um, cuneiform, 
talk about um, well, sorry, the, the, the um, I can't remember the religious name, uh, Bhagavad Gita. Uh, but yeah, it's the Vimanas. Those are the supposed uh, craft that was used that were used by the gods at that point. Uh, and the thing is, though, what's amazing and crazy is that uh, the prophet Ezekiel, supposedly, according to the Old Testament, described a certain craft, the whole wheels and wheels thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever heard that. Where like, you know, chariots of the gods, you know, like this thing, you know, with fire coming out from the sky and this prophet sees it and, he, you know, he doesn't know what the fuck to do. Uh, and he describes a craft and he actually gives measurements. Well, when you uh, cross-reference those measurements towards the Vimanas that supposedly exist and were used by Hindu gods, they actually are a perfect match. And they actually had a, um, a temple, well, a temple measurement that was used in multiple temples, but this temple measured exactly these dimensions, which basically indicated that this uh, craft, the Vimana, was utilized by these gods and used these sorts of temples more as landing pads rather than anything else. So, um, you know, the ancients, for example, like old, like uh, primitive people would look at that and think, you know, that's um, that's where the God lives, that the gods live and such. And, you know, yeah, create all sorts of fantasies regarding, you know, what this advanced civilization is actually doing. I could see it. I mean, I could see it uh, nowadays if we were all to die and something survived and then people took over or came back up or found this area who became primitive, primitive gathering hunters. Uh, because of necessity, would say, like, wow, there were these gods that were here before, and they would assume the role then, maybe. Or you don't know what they would do. They would either Joe, embody there are, it. There are civilizations right now on this planet that have never met human beings, like uh, uh, other external human beings. There oh, right. are, are well, yeah. tribes out there yeah. that have never sort of interacted with people literally hundreds of thousands of years. And there's a, there's a lot of them that are aware of us, too, that but they don't they don't fully understand... But they still do their own thing, even though they're somewhat aware of us, right? Like, and, and but they're so, but they're still primitive and living off of. Well, a great example that's referred to many people is that during the uh, World War II, there was many uh, British uh, supply crafts that were dropping supplies on islands that, again, had never been visited or discovered by anybody for thousands of years or tens of thousands of years. Now, these primitives here uh, on those um, islands saw these planes and they actually thought that they were like birds. Like So they, they, they actually uh, started to believe that um, these people in these crafts were gods. So they actually have right now certain cults living on these islands that actually follow this religion where the, you know, this, the, the white man flying in the, the metal uh, bird will return here and bring more prosperity to us because you know, they were receiving these um, the supply drops and stuff and had things that they'd never experienced before. And there's a tribe or two that actually worship Prince uh, Charles, you know, that fucking inbred faggot from right. England yeah, uh, Charlesy. as a God. He's oh, actually, God. and there's pictures of this, like where Good they're Lord. carrying the guy around and like they have celebrations for him and they consider him a God. I mean, that is concerning. <laughs> I mean, but, uh, I mean, Hey, I mean, if I was him, I wouldn't, Man, I couldn't. He lets them do oh, that. He's, he's used to it. He's he used lets to it. them do that. That's that's sort of disgusting. But, but the thing is, but, though, it just gives it gives you an idea as to the fact that you can have people living on the same planet, right, and still have ones that are just so primitive that they will not understand something, uh, you know, because they have not evolved to that point. And it's it's to me, it's very easy to see an advanced civilized uh, civilization living on a planet surviving after a massive cataclysm yep. and a big number of people that are primitives that were existing on that planet before that somehow survived look upon these people as gods. Oh, yeah. Oh, no yeah. No matter how they do things. Well, and we'll, you know, some other day we'll get into, there's so much to get into. I mean, we, we I mean, were these crafts taken over by the Germans? Was this some sort of a power display? And if it was, why didn't they win the war then? Um, you know, are these the aliens was this something governmental that was neither of those things? Um, I don't know. That's a whole podcast, too. This is interesting. Raymond Rods and everybody in the chat has been playing these games with numbers. Um, people were talking about when they were born. I was born in 1984. I'm 36 years old. 1984 plus 36 is 2020. How weird is that? It's not weird at all. It's Bizarre. your birth date, how old you are, and the current year. Right. How weird is that? It's just fucking Dave, mad. Dave, we're going to die. 
That is that. That's what that means. Yeah, you, you might wake up dead tomorrow. Do you, you understand what this means, Dave? No, <laughs> I don't know. Man. I don't know what it means. It's coincidental numbers to me. Also, but, I want to add one thing is that uh, I may have said this, so shut uh, me up if I did. But um, the astrophysicist Eric Davis, who did report, uh, a, you know, about this UFO uh, issue, uh -huh. who says that the Pentagon has off-world vehicles not made on this Earth, was speaking more of speculation. It wasn't an actual official Pentagon official that said this. Right. It wasn't anybody, uh, it wasn't, you know, even a, a, an actual declaration uh, right. of disclosure. No, that's it a really good of, uh, No, it's a really good point that you're making because a lot of people, including myself, have run away with they have off-world vehicles when actuality the real truth is after you read this and i've been reading it while i've been on the air this entire time here or there because we know how i read but um it's it's that they're about to dis un disclose certain things and then this guy is saying i when they do you're going to see it cuz they have off-world vehicles Okay, so that a, doesn't it, mean that that's in true in legal terms it's a it's a leading argument now that right. being said um, look, logic dictates that you would realize this when you have a better idea of the scope of the secret space program, because there's multiple levels and there's different types and there's breakaway civilizations. Uh, and I believe I've talked about this on some old episode of Final Frontier News. But the bottom line is, though, right. that this Nazi breakaway group was just one of them. And... Um, the thing is, though, like, for example, until Space Force came around, each military group had their own sort of Space Force. The Navy had their own Space Force, Air Force, uh, Marines even had their own Space Force, right? Um, and who knows what they were doing? The whole purpose of Space Force really is to unify them all so that you reduce the bureaucracy and you, like, make it public so that people are aware of what they're doing because there's too much secrets. But basically, uh, these uh, private space well, not private, but these uh, space force groups were, um, you know, were involved in in many different things. And um, I mean, oh shit! I mean, we could do a whole show on that, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, the bottom line is, though, think of it this way: for many decades, they've already talked about actually how to build um, a space station in space with 1950s technology. Okay. With, with regular 1950s technology. So if you think, okay, they're already advanced in 1950s with these crafts to get up there into space, and they already have access to regular technology, they're easily going to be able to build these bases. So these bases that have been existing in orbit for many decades can easily produce these crafts that they're talking about. So technically, the argument isn't false, right? right. Yes, we know that you know the military and their various space uh, forces would have access to crafts that were made by humans, but made off the planet. Why? Well, because uh, metal manufacturing, for example, can be a lot more easy in zero gravity. So if you've right. got these bases existing in orbit or maybe on the moon or on the dark side of the moon, yep. well then, yeah, of course they're made off the world. And uh -huh. if the Pentagon is, you know, involved in, in, uh, you know, uh, one of the space programs, the secret space programs, of course they have access to this stuff, but they, they just try to make it convoluted. And they, the problem is I, they made it ridiculous. And you know, this like, you know, back they back in the fifties, they were trying to make it look like it was all like a joke and stuff. Right. And the green men. The, the green yeah, man wait, and the saucer. Until the 1990s when you had X-Files uh, come out where there was a little more legitimacy because, again, what came out at that point? Bob Lazar. Right. And Bob so, Lazar, to, I mean, I know there's some holes in his stuff, but, I mean, this guy just keeps looking better and better every decade, it feels like. I don't, not that I, I mean, I'm, I mean, you can tell I'm rooting for him. I, I, I mean, I am. I'm just going to be honest. Well, he's one of many. Um, yeah. And, yeah, you know, I'd. I've said my piece in regards to the fact that I think that he's been fed information um, right. that is false. But again, he does he does have knowledge. I mean, he is like a, a physicist and engineer. Like, he yeah. knows his stuff. But and I don't doubt that if he had access to the parts, he could put together exactly what he's been discussing. Well, it's him but, and the, even the Disclosure Project, although that's a bit of a scammy thing, you know, run by a salesman type of guy. But a lot of those guys are, some of those guys at least, are very reputable, like, engineer science type guys that just don't 
they're not looking to lie. None of them wrote a book. I mean, usually and at least at least that we can look positive on on the disclosure thing with that because again, I get a bad feeling with the disclosure stuff too because I I believe that it's been infiltrated and redirected by shills and government and so forth. But right, a lot of the people actually are genuine, and the, the their whole purpose of putting the reputation on the line is just getting to the truth, and that's yeah. got to be respectable when you're willing to throw it away, throw all of it away, you know. Uh, just to get to the truth. Some of the guys are just, they're just not made up for public eye either. They're not, they're people that are uncomfortable by being yep. on camera and by being involved and they don't have, they don't even have a book. And if you research a lot of these guys, unfortunately, they don't want to write books. Some of them do write books, but you, you usually got to look out for the guy that goes, I'm writing a book right now. And it's about the, that guy, that something's there. But the guy that's writing a book because some what happens is these sharks go after these guys and they go, this should be in a book. You should be writing a book. I could help you with the book. And then they end up writing a book and they have a guy writing it for them and a sales guy and a publishing company. And they don't really necess- – they never would have necessarily done that. And once you write a book, you immediately start getting a little bit discredited. But what are you supposed to do? How else are you supposed to give your story, give your information? But when you make money from it, it kind of goes out the window. But a lot of those guys – aren't book writers and they're not interviewers and some of them only have done one or two interviews and already that they regret because their lives are dictated by these crazy people hitting them up and trying to get them on shows and they just wanted to come out and say that and that's it they have nothing else to say and they want to be left alone but you know they know they're not going to be washington according to recent report from new york times the top secret pentagon program has been conducting classified briefings for over a decade analyzing various encounters between military craft and unidentified aerial vehicles. According to the Times, the Pentagon stated that the program was disbanded, but Senate committee report last month revealing um, spending on a program called Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force. We talked about this years ago, that they would change the language of UFO, of alien, of all those type of words. They would change those words around so that we wouldn't be looking for that anymore. Uh, The answer to that is here. In the in the uh, way of in the answer of uh, the name of uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon. Now you could read somebody. Most people could read over a paragraph and be like, oh, "Something an unidentified aerial phenomenon." Okay, I don't know what that means. Oh, well, they didn't see UFO, so nothing ever you know caught your interest. Um, but it's just another way of saying UFO, or we don't know what this is in the sky. But because we're all triggered and and programmed to think UFO alien. No average yep. person catches that. And guess what? The language they're using now that we don't even know what it is, it's probably even more vague. It's probably, you know what I mean, um, you know, unidentified phenomenon or, or unidentified uh, event. You know what I mean? Or like uh, mystery event. Something like that. It's probably called a mystery event. So we'll never know, ever think to think like, oh, that's UFO. So they've got the obvious language, the coded, and then they've got some other kind of language. And then they've got the super coded language that we don't even, none of us know that only certain departments in the government know that this is coded language. And it's not as obvious as even mystery event. It's probably could be, you know, we found a, a tactical spot seven. You know, it's stuff like that. You think they're going to name it what we, you know, would obviously catch up on? Of course not. Um, we continue to read. Uh, it was reported late June, U.S. Senator Marco Rubio had requested detailed an- analysis of the task force findings The report stated the committee supports the efforts of the task force to collect and standardize data regarding unidentified aerial phenomena. You know little little Rubio, right? Little Marky Rubio? Little Rubio is upset. Uh, The neocon piece of shit. Um, Yeah, it's surprising. But even he on, I think it was CNN, straight out claimed, yeah, like if there's actual stuff, you know, about these saucers and stuff, about these craft, like we need to know. Uh, and, and, and he even discussed like the possibility that they were off world and he's like, it, it doesn't matter. We just need to know. Right. So it's interesting that he specifically he'll, is coming out to talk about that. He'll be killed. The, you got to always <laughs> question their timing, especially yeah. like a fucking turncoat piece of shit like him. So, he's a weird dude. That guy is a strange person. But like, you know, obviously why now? But. Um, again, him of all people, like that's weird. You know, it's weird that this guy of all people is talking about this. I don't know what the reason is, but it's suspect for sure. Like 70% nefarious. Like, I I don't know, man, might be more than that, but 
Uh, it's very weird. Like you said, it's just very, I, I saw his name too, and I was like, huh. I mean, is that to get his own name? It could be all kinds of things. It could be anything from super nefarious down to just trying to get his name out there right now. I mean, it could be any of those things. I think um, he got his marching orders. But it that's the real thing is that he got some kind of, you know, execute order 66. Yeah. Uh, astrophysicist and former consultant for UFO programs since 2007, Eric W. Davis, told the Times he gave a classified briefing to the Defense Department agency as early as March regarding off-world vehicles not made on this Earth. So that is a claim that we're hearing used in all these articles. Over the past years, federal government has released footage. We know about that. We've seen the real footage. It all matches up with how Bob Lazar described the vehicles, by the way. Um, we've seen that. We speculated on it. Then we actually saw it. Then the government clarified that it is it. Um, U.S. Navy UFO Task Force exists. I mean, so they're really confirming all this stuff. Why? Why are they confirming all this stuff now? I mean, it's insane I mean, when you look at this stuff. What's the and, reason? And, and it's funny, though, because the, the Pentagon a few months back literally released three. Uh, I think it was maybe it was 2019, but they released three fucking videos of that chase from the USS Nimitz uh, encounter where the, the, the pilots are trying to chase this craft that looks like a top and this thing keeps just fucking outpacing them and then switching directions and and they're laughing and, you know, like there's three different videos of this stuff. And like there wasn't a – like we even talked about this. Yeah. There was no peep. There was no peep from anybody, from the media, from, you know, social media, anybody. Yeah, they didn't say anything. Just like the just like the Weinstein stuff or the Epstein stuff. I think Epstein we talked stuff. about it. It was just like, well, are they going to like do another event or something that try to like wake people up and say like, "Hello, UFOs. <laughs> Anyone paying attention?" Yeah, I don't I, what is it, dude, it's so interesting cuz we don't know why this is happening. I don't understand. Like, what are they what's going on? It's got to be something. And it's like, but it, it seems like the more closer we get to this child ring of abductions yep, and pedophilia that's what it is. The close it's seriously the close it's it. The closer we get to like child trafficking and pedophilia and all these things, the closer we get, the more UFO stuff gets thrown out. Or you know? mur murder hornets. What happened to those? I thought we were getting murder hornets. Well, that didn't work out as well. The COVID <laughs> stuff has worked pretty well, but not really because people are now, you know, <laughs> they're going out and tipping over Dancing statues. In the street. And, or well that too, partying or just raging. It's made everything worse. Uh, Eating probably. in restaurants in North Carolina without tipping. <laughs> well, that's a whole nother uh, thing. Um, I don't know what to say about him, but um, I am surprised you came on tonight, but i got to give you credit for doing it. Um, I had to talk to UFOs, man, because there's a lot of misinformation, and, um, you know, got to keep that um, that info clean. What do you think about uh, Regis, man? Uh, you like that guy? or I enjoyed him. I enjoyed him back in the day. He entertained I mean, you know, me, Regis yeah. And Kathy Lee. Uh, he had the parade or whatever the fuck it was, or was it New Year's? I can't remember. Oh yeah, remember, he but did. Like, didn't he do a lot of the Thanksgiving Day more parade where he'd be? Yeah, like... Yeah, I think he did the that and the, potentially the the um, what's the, the the Irish one, the the St. Yeah, Patty's one. Bet. You guys saw that up in Canada, the Thanksgiving parades? Yeah, man. Of course, we got American channels. Oh my NBC, god, that's so weird. NBC. Yeah, he's one of those guys that even when I was a little kid, I thought he was an old guy. But he was entertaining. You start watching him, and you're like, oh, I can't help but... And then you look back at his really old stuff, and you start to fucking laugh your ass off. <laughs> yeah, he was he was like kind of like the Bob Saget in a way, like what he did originally, versus becoming this like wholesome entertainer on TV. But he was everywhere, though. Like, he was like Frankie Valli, or, you know, like, he was just like everywhere. Yeah. With yeah. all shows, all, like, events, like, you know, it could be like uh, a telethon, he'd be there... You know, I never knew how much uh, how many people loved this guy. I mean, I saw people uh, in the comments section on the po on everywhere on the posts on Instagram, and I mean, white people, black people, Hispanic, just people of all types, people of all kinds, everywhere, saying like, "Oh, you know, I used to love watching him and stuff like that." I'm like, "Wow, this guy really got over for for every kind of person everywhere," and I had no idea about that, you know. And because he had such a classic way too of this of the comedy entertainment and host mentality. But yeah, man, he was charismatic. That must be what it was, dude, because I loved it. You know, I mean, Michael Strahan, you know, all right. But Regis and Kathy Lee, like, I, I don't even know why I would watch that. But I'd turn it on sometimes, like, oh, man, this is on. And then you'd, I'd watch it, and I'd be stuck. And uh, yeah, I remember those it. days where, like, you know, I'm off from school or something. This was in high school. I'm off from school or something. It was like 
you know, exams or something and, you know, I didn't have to go to school and just tuned in and like, uh, there's nothing else to watch. Why not? And it's just like, I love this Regis guy. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I like, he's like one of those guys that I liked. I like didn't worship him or anything, but I just, when he was on, if I turned it on, I found myself listening to everything he was going to say. And it's weird because I didn't like him like Howard Stern or something, but I, man, there's a respect for that charisma and way to captivate the audience. So it's too bad, man. But I never watched, uh, never caught one episode ever of who wants to be a millionaire. Never saw it. I never watched that show either. It was those questions bored me? Yeah, I mean, he was so he wasn't he wasn't that good. I mean, like I said, we didn't watch that show. But I think that the new generation did, and I think a lot of people know him from that now. And it's kind of crazy to think that, but because nah, he, Antifa would shut it down immediately. Well, he's probably how dare, you, how dare you want to be a millionaire? Well, I'm surprised that people were were saying they loved this guy because I think he was a Trump guy too. So like, I'm surprised people weren't like, "Oh, fuck him! Good thing he's dead," you know. So, uh, but uh, uh, rest in peace to Regis, man. WWE uh, sent out a thing about him. I don't think he's in the Hall of Fame at WWE, but I mean, who cares about their Hall of Fame anyway? But <laughs> you know, things a joke. But uh, yeah, man, Dave, uh, appreciate you stopping by, bro, and. Uh, you know, I got uh, one piece of information that you should be discussing. All right. Um, have you ever heard of the Three Gorges Dam in China? The Three Gorges what? Three gorges, uh -huh. like a gorge is, you know, like a okay. deep valley type thing, but right. gorges multiple, and then uh, dam, as in, you know, like Hoover Dam. You're right. No. Well, derailed here to tell you a story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, okay. So basically, massive flooding in China oh, right now. Really? Um, it's like the Three Gorges Dam is the biggest dam on the planet, and um, the dams that come prior to that, uh, some of them actually had to be destroyed because the amount of water that's coming through them is just so massive that it's literally starting to encroach on on uh, land and start to uh, flood cities. So the thing is, though. They tried to alleviate that, and it didn't work. So now, like, if you look online, you'll see videos of these massive torrents of water just literally ripping things apart oh. in cities. It's not being reported by the media nor by the Chinese government, but literally millions of people have been cut off by from certain cities, okay? And um, they, they, they're opening these release valves on these dams to try to, or the, you know, the floodgates as they call them, to try to just alleviate the pressure as much as possible. But it's getting damaged so badly. Wow. And uh, there's so much pressure that it's, even the, the Chinese government has come out and said, first of all, they've admitted, and you can see this stuff from orbit, dude, from satellite photos, from Google. Right. The, the, the dam itself, obviously made in China, great quality, has buckled and like bent massively. Oh, man. And there's been photos of like chunks of concrete coming off this shit. Now, if this motherfucker breaks, literally, they're, they're thinking that at least 40 million Chinese, uh, like 40 million will die what? from the immediate floodings. Potentially more. Um, what dam? What water is this holding? What body of water is this keeping contained? Um, it's a, it's the Yangtze River. Oh my God, dude! And actually, you know what? I'm I'm glad that you're talking about this now because they actually just today released a collapse video. Well, talking about it because you brought it up. <laughs> Cr um, credit to you. Well, as JB would I'm not, say, I'm not JB, so you know, fuck that. <laughs> uh, but they, they, they actually did a, a, a video animation of this, and it doesn't take too long to, to watch it and all, but um, it's, it's crazy to see the, um, like the potential uh, of flooding because it'll just – the problem is that like all these cities are built along this river, right? Right. So when, when, this, when the water levels rise, and they're thinking it might rise to 20 meters – I don't Good even Lord. know what that is in feet. Um, oh my God! That will literally times just three. cover these these fucking cities over, and oh. it's it's insane. Like I, because it's going to cripple their economy, which then might just cripple America's economy because you get all your shit. Well, everyone gets their shit from China. So, well, is it? Do you think? I mean, do they are they really saying forty million people could die or forty million people could be affected? 
No, die. Straight out die. Jesus. And, and like, basically, uh, uh, like, a few hu- – well, I saw varying numbers. It's hard to get the exact numbers, but at least 100 million would be affected. I didn't know they were – they're being displaced from their city, so they can escape. But where do they go? What can they do? I, I mean, just put another video in there, which is actually is one of those videos that came out actually – couple of days ago just to showing um a, a simulation this is one of the, the simulations that came out but good god uh, it, it it's it would literally affect millions of people um you know throughout the entire country not just along the the flood routes and it's actually it would basically totally flood over wuhan well that's not all so bad but no, <laughs> no. yeah um but no so I they I don't know what copyright is on this, but... Um, well, I just wanted to at least show you so that oh you could uh, see what it might, uh, so, might look like. And part of this is going to happen because not only does the... the I'm, I'm sure that the dam, the dam is not only is it keeping the water out, but it's also kind of putting pressure against that area to push it other places, which is fine. But once this thing overflows, not only is the water that normally would be stopped coming in, but now water everywhere else is redirecting pressure-wise in. So now you're getting yep. that... It'll flood uh, farm plains where like they're, they've got like the rice stock and stuff. Like literally it'll wipe out massive amounts of, of food. Like there's going to be a massive famine in China if this happens. Or should I say when it happens? I mean, how do they not have some... I mean, I guess this is like... Well, the government's know, actually been preparing the people like psychologically saying expect it to break and this was what? initially a dam that they said oh in 10,000 years there will never be a flood that will overwhelm it and then a few years later like the communists do they updated that to oh in a thousand years there will never be a flood that will affect it then a few years later oh in a hundred years now it's like uh okay people uh be ready because it's about to break because that's what they're, they're they're telling a lot of people that i mean it's not as bad as if yellowstone went but it's along the lines of something like that in america not it'll be quite. a cataclysm i mean the people like millions of people will die uh, millions more will be affected uh production levels of you know what they're doing it's good, like the whole country is going to grind to a halt like they're going to well, go to this stone age almost i also really think that one of the reasons why America needs to get back to producing things and not relying on China isn't just to say F you to China and things like that. And same thing with Canada and all over the world. I don't, I don't think... <laughs> because it makes it economic sense. Right. Well, not, <laughs> only the, not only does it make economic sense for all of us to be able to produce our own basic stuff, but it's also our duty as humans to all be able to maybe take care of each other. Like if something happens in Canada and things go down... You need help from America. If something happens in America, we may need help from China. Like, so it's all of our duties to all of us be producing. So if someone else has a problem, we can help each other. If everybody's just relying on China, though, and they go down, everyone's screwed. And, and China's screwed. Like, so that's why, you know, I, business is business, and that's why people do everything in China. But that's why it doesn't make any sense for the better of humanity we all and we are producing things here, but we need to produce more here and be ready. No, like it, 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 that's how it, I feel. It, I mean, that's my hippie people ass. Make things in China because gov- like people get kickbacks because look at you know like uh, they just announced Elon Musk is is making um, what they're calling the biggest automob- uh, automotive factory on the planet in Texas for his um, really ugly looking. Tr- you know, cyber truck, whatever the fuck that thing is called. Yeah. You know, that shitty thing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they're building the biggest factory there. You know, all these companies are going back to America. Uh, it's not because it's, it's unaffordable to work in America. It's just that because fucking politicians yeah. like Biden or fucking Pelosi were just, you know, getting their kickbacks by, you know, directing companies to go uh, put people there or right. companies there. Yeah. Uh, people, Exactly. Kickbacks is the reason. It's not just that it's cheaper. We go over there. It's it's, it's some. It's just like, you know, kind of, you know, not to pick on churches, but, and it's not the same thing at all, but, you know, I don't know, there's some incentive there for the churches when they don't get taxed, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, you can make a living. It's not the same thing. I'm jumping to some other thing, but I'm, that just makes me angry, too. But it uh, has nothing to do with this. Um, unfortunately, our world is F. No one cares about their neighbors or people. I think people do, Bruce, though. I think a lot of people don't, and some of the people in charge don't. But 
a lot of we can if we can you know turn our thinking a little bit you know what i mean and we may, you maybe we may we, the whole entire world could be taking chinese refugees if this is true no thanks i i know how you feel but <laughs> i'm sorry i'm not gonna, i don't know bro the whole entire world if this happens like if this really happens and you're and you really 40 million people die and there's like 10 to 20 million people displaced if that's true, I don't think that those numbers are. I can't believe those are right. I almost feel like, you know, maybe a million could die. I don't even. I don't know though. I have no idea. You know more than I do. I'm just finding out about this. Um, but you know, can you imagine? Like, it's bad. It trust me. It looks really bad. If that happened or happens, um, there will be. I mean, there will be the a worldwide movement to take refugees or, or or i mean what there should be is a is a movement in china to set up temporary housing and care and the whole world should converge supplies and stuff like that instead of but i don't know dude i don't know what's going to happen if that happens if what you said happens and what they think is going to happen happens based on what i'm reading dude i don't know brand you're looking at it you're looking at a humanitarian effort that would have to happen to help people that Unless you yeah, want, unless you, you want, China's going to immediately accept help. No, considering they think they're all so mighty. I don't know, dude. I don't know what. That's the other problem. Is what will China do? Will China just say, "Oh well"? No, we have everything under control. Actually, um, uh, as of two days ago, I think that they said that their uh, death toll of all the floods that have been going on for the last month is 150 people. Oh my God! Give me a break. Yeah, that's not. I mean, yeah, but see, well. I mean, I guess the the Wuhan stuff I get because they're like they obviously did something wrong and they're were they're worried. But this, I mean, they, the, they hold on, they, dude. They, the Three Gorges Dam, the environmentalists, politicians, geologists, all warned about the fact that this dam should never have been built. It was a massive ecological disaster towards uh, the, the flora and fauna that were previously living in those areas. Uh, it took up massive amounts of uh, resources and created a lot of uh, pollution oh, God. due to making the, the, those resources. Like, again, I don't know how – there's no way to really explain this, but, like, this thing literally is the biggest dam, like the longest and, you know, right. most massive dam on the planet. So, like, I mean, yeah, uh, Hoover Dam is nice and tall. It looks beautiful, you know, but this thing is like long and thick. That's what she said. Oh, and, yeah. Um, now we're talking just like your porno with Nikki. <laughs> That's the rumor. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like. How'd you um, not know that was a joke, you butt face? I didn't. I didn't say that. I didn't know. But I, was, I didn't listen to that show. But oh, it was well, of course I was brought kidding. up to me. So. Uh, well, that's the problem. But I, of course I was joking. Nobody thinks there's really a porno of you. And Nikki, it was just a thing I threw out there to be funny. Like, why? Did I don't care, man. You're talking to the wrong guy about this stuff. Well, whatever. Anyway, um, listen. I think you you got some really. Well, the other thing too is they'll cover it up because incompetence on the dams, like you just said, they don't want to look incompetent. So, but maybe it will be too big. To, I don't know, man. But the way they it's handle COVID, be very hard to hide. That's for sure because the satellite photos will prove it. Now, you may be aware of this, but uh -huh. China has develop what are these called ghost cities have you ever heard of those no but that scares the hell out of me and they don't believe in ghosts well they sort of do at least you know in their chinese uh way or they're but, scared of um, them or something right and well they believe in some spirits and stuff but regardless is that these ghost cities uh -huh. are basically empty cities they were constructed in the housing boom but nobody lives in them Right. Now, there's been a lot of speculation as to why that is the case. And, um, you know, if, if the Chinese, for example, are aware of a massive um, threat or, you know, cataclysm, it might make sense to create cities like this that you could relocate your massive population. Because, again, you know, second largest population on the planet. And, you know, fill all these ghost cities that literally are... You know, you know how the Chinese make their cities super massive and super big and stuff. Well, they're empty. All these buildings oh exist, God. but nobody's living there. Sort of like the like those nuclear sites in America and Vegas or Nevada, rather, where they tested the nuclear. Yeah, you know what? Sort of. 
but imagine like a massive like city. city. So you like, think that with they're skyscrapers and shit? Are you saying that they're they're prepared for this to move people there, or there's some kind of decoy? Well, um, first I think that they built them because uh, they the Chinese always very duplicitous um, have to show. Um, increase in uh, production on paper so one way to do this is to create these cities so you're employing you're producing you can put it down on paper but you know as a secondary um tactic and again i believe a lot of these uh, governments are aware of uh what's going on out there now you're a big proponent of planet x which i argue massively ab- against but not against entirely because there's clearly something out there but the governments are aware that there's something out there and that they've got to have sort of the ability to continue to survive and that includes by having people alive so why would they have a you know a city out in the middle of nowhere that could literally take in you know a million people well as a backup plan for a cataclysm yeah, I mean, that's a smart idea. And probably stuff underground that we have no idea about, or we have an idea exactly. about, but can you imagine what's underground in China from their government? Um, yeah, man, like there's so much to this. I'm sure we'll uh, talk more about it at some point uh, in the future here, uh, very soon maybe. And, man, I appreciate you calling to to uh, give me the, the news and the info. Never would have known about this wall stuff uh, because, you know, Without, if you don't do your own research in America, you're spoon fed uh, the trivial two dimensional news uh, every day that's uh, we're spun on. Uh, but anyway, yeah, man, uh, appreciate it, and uh, I think that's it, man. I'm gonna do corrupted in about thirty minutes. The questions are up on Patreon, and we're gonna have a special guest tonight. I, at least I think we're going to. Uh, hopefully, he's good to go. Although uh, I'm not really sure. <laughs> he might have fallen asleep. I hope not. But we're supposed to have a special guest returning tonight. And it's not even Dave, uh, but it's but well, he did call in tonight. You called in randomly tonight, and that was uh, that was cool. Well, um, I'm not feeling sleepy yet, and if you can't find a co-host, might as well uh, you know surprise your viewers with a little surprise deviousness. Maybe we'll uh, we'll. I'm we'll feeling see. generous tonight. How about that? Look at this, Dave Rose, man. Not, he I'm did. not turning face though. That's not possible. No. Well, someone's got to hold me accountable. So. I appreciate it, uh, Dave. You know that, and uh, I'll talk to you soon, man. Maybe, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll get we'll get you on either way for something. So, yeah, much appreciated, and we'll see if that special guest shows up. And if he does, then it will really be a fire episode tonight of Corrupted Podcast. Um, but thanks, Dave, for uh, stopping by, man. No worries, man. You yeah, have a good night. All right, I'll talk to you soon, maybe. Bye. We'll have you on tonight. All right, we'll have Dave on tonight, maybe. We'll see. I haven't talked to him in a long time. He randomly called. And he brought a lot to the table, man. You can... Did not expect that. Um, Well, Dave, I don't know if he'll say that word again. (laughs) Um, Him and TJ have to apologize, or he has to... Him and TJ have to have a showdown again where he doesn't... Where he doesn't call him the bad word. But, um... He had a long suspension, I guess. Um... You know what? There was a lot of guys uh, who backed up Dave, who backed him. A lot of black listeners, a lot of African American and black listeners, who backed up Dave and said that they don't think that you know. So he had a lot of support. You know, to be fair to him, we'll see what happens going forward, man. Maybe tonight Shit bomb. could be crazy on Corrupted tonight. I would love to call into your show sometime and tell you and Dave about my UFO encounter. Uh, black sense matters. I would love for you to do that, dude. It's been a while since I I didn't expect to have Dave on. I don't even know if we have, we don't really have a show. We have Final Frontier News that we used to do, but we, me and him have been at odds for months. Um, but if I can, if he ends up working something out and coming back and we talk and stuff, I would love to do a Final Frontier News and have you on and talk about your UFO experience. We used to have other people on for that too. So Black Sense Matters, love to have you. Thanks for the $5, dude. Much appreciated. Um... I'm just messaging the guest right now. I don't know if Super he's Jack. there. Super Jack. Give us Troy Uncorrupted. Give us Troy Uncorrupted. That's hilarious. Um, it's funny that you say that. Um, 
Let me see. Well, a broken lion. We'll see what we can do, brother. I keep saying that, man. What am I listening to Hogan all week? We know something, brother. Um, let me see here. Thank you. I had to send. I send a message out. I gotta send a message out, dude. I I got blown away last night on monetize this when I found out that the that the guy that played Ben on uh, Short Circuit is not Indian. He's not actually Indian. I didn't know that, dude. I literally freaked out last night. I you blew. I think I did learn this one other time, and I forgot. I like erased it from my memory. I was like, see how diverse the '80s were. You know, they had an Indian guy playing Ben on Short Circuit. And he was like the lead guy besides Johnny Five. That's in Johnny Number Five. He's not Indian. He's a white dude. And they painted him tan. I didn't in the eighties. I had no idea, dude. You're leaking battery acid, Johnny Number Five. Like I had no idea. The guy. I thought he was. I fucking can't believe it. I mean, nice son. Well, tonight we have a very special guest. First of all, I did not expect Dave to call tonight. Credit to Dave for calling. Um, I had no idea that uh, the Ben was not. In, I I was given trying to give credit to the '80s about diversity, and then it gets and then it went completely the opposite route. I'm trying to give credit to diversity to the '80s, and um, it was just it blew my mind, man. But corrupted podcast tonight. We're gonna have a special guest on with us tonight. It's going to blow your minds, I think, a little bit. Maybe not. Maybe it won't. Maybe it will. Broken Lion and everybody else. And um, Jesse, what up, dude? Can you hear me okay? No, you're really low. What are you uh, going to... There we go. Why don't you talk over some donations, you piece of shit? Okay. Go ahead. Why don't you talk over some... Do- no, I'm just kidding. How you doing, dude? You okay? Oh, yeah. You're all kinds of problems. No, I forgot. What, did you break your mic, too? Uh, there's a piece of it missing. You piece of piss? 6.5 earthquake hit the Atlantic. And then the earthquake the other day that they were worried about in Alaska oh. taking out the whole goddamn country. By the way, if you guys want more of this, make sure you sub to my channels. Shame on News, Corrupted Nation, and <laughs> Final Frontier News. And make sure you're 100% that you're with us tonight in 20 minutes. 20 minutes patreon.com slash Joe Cronin show. We're going to be live. 20 titty fucking minutes. 20 titty fucking Jesse's mommy minutes. We're going to be live (laughs) on Patreon. And not only that, you can listen for just $1. Now, we would really like you to become a $10 VIP or something, but $1 you can hear the show tonight live and you support the show and keep it rolling. It's going to be like old times on Corrupted tonight. We got Jesse in the house. Dave might call again. Uh, we got Drew. Well, that's the only problem is Drew's going to be there, but whatever. Fuck his mother. Um, uh, she's going to poison her over the weekend, I heard, which is going to be really wild when she w- winds up dead. Um, and then one other guest joining us on Corrupted tonight. I did tell you it was going to be a bad hurricane season and a bad earthquake season and everything like that. Anyway, Jesse. Maybe Jesse, nope. maybe Jesse will join us for a little bit too, man. Tonight, let's bring everybody on, and we won't. There won't be any donations, so there's nothing nobody can talk over. So we can all just have a good corrupted conversation. Yeah. <laughs> really good, Jesse. Thanks, man. You added a lot to that. Good job. What the fuck? I because you threw me off with the oh maybe he'll be on. It's like well I thought now I was you won't be. talk. Now tonight you won't talk. The other night you won't shut the fuck up. Now tonight you won't talk. What the fuck's wrong with you, dude? I gave you options. I said I could shut the fuck up for a while. You said, no, come on. I'll, I'll yeah, shut up. Yeah, because you know me. I'm not really mad at anybody ever. Yeah, but I'm willing to pull back. You, know? you should pull back a little bit, but 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 at the same time. Yeah, I can pull back. How about Nerdy, though, man? Nerdy usually was like, Nerdy was talking way too much the last few weeks, but last night in the first two hours, he said two things that were hilarious. He did. Absolutely. I don't remember what they were. If somebody can timestamp monetize this, if they can painstakingly go through It was kind of early, man. It was, it was. It was like 35 minutes in or something. It was 35 minutes it. in. He had two golden comments. They really were good. 
Anyway, I had fun tonight, guys. I'm going to get off the air because I want to get ready for a Corrupted Podcast. If you guys aren't patrons, you can go on your desktop, tablet, whatever, download the app on your phone, Patreon. Go download it. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Become a patron tonight. 333 of you already have. And we're all going to be live on Corrupted in about 20 minutes. The questions are already up. Five of you have already asked questions. Usually we have about 20. I think we're going to end up with about 25 or so tonight. There they are. They're posted. Get over there and let's go. Patreon right now. Jesse, you are excited, aren't you? (laughs) Oh, my good God. Oh, we lost Jesse. We lost his connection. It's going to be me, Drew, maybe Dave for a little bit. Jesse, potentially, and a special guest returning tonight on Corrupted Podcast. We didn't get to talk about Matt Hardy talking, going back to being real Matt Hardy instead of being broken that much. We didn't get to too much of this, um, but we will talk more about that tomorrow. And there's a lot to talk about with it. I have some harsh opinions on that, and I'm not very happy about it. So, uh, yeah, you're probably going to get a bit of a rant from me tomorrow, man. But thanks for all the donations tonight. If you want to donate, you got about 30 more seconds. Get it in. Drop me one. If you want to drop something and say something before Corrupted, do it right now. Super chat down below. Streamlabs in description box. If you want to tip me for anything for some reason, do it now. you got about 30 seconds or so. Drop it in there, and I obviously I'll, get, I'll read it, and we'll get to those last thoughts right now. Um, I guess it's the last two minutes. Otherwise, I'll catch you on Corrupted. And uh, I really appreciate you guys. I know that I said I would do this earlier today around 1 p.m., but I was out mowing the lawn because the lawn was growing crazy and everything was nuts. So, And I'm sorry we didn't cover the UFO stuff as much yesterday, so I wanted to get to it right here because I wasn't sure how much you know Drew and Jesse would want to cover it since they didn't like to cover it last night. But I did, and so we did that here tonight, and we still only scratched the surface of this thing. There's so much more to delve in, dive into, and uh, I think we can do that. Thank you, everybody. Broken Lion, thanks for that last dono. Sean's View Entertainment, I'm loud, I'm proud, I'm scrowd, I'm doubt, I'm in doubt, I'm, I'm whatever. Here's Patreon. Here's the link for the Patreon, guys. Go check it out. There's free stuff there for you. I'm going to be uploading a little bit more free stuff for you for the people that don't have a dollar to their name right now because of COVID. We're going to try to get something to you. Um, but for the rest of you guys that can support, you'll unlock everything, 30 hours of bonus content a month, 30 hours a month that you don't see on YouTube. Every episode of Final Frontier News, every episode of me and Leah's podcast, me and Jake's podcast, me and Jesse's After Dark. You heard a free version of that the other day, four hours long. Uh, uh, uh. Broken Lion got a long one in the chat. Last night's Monetize This had some good moments, but overall it sucked dick. So let's make up for it tonight with Corrupted Podcast. I'm aware of it. Let's go, brothers. Tonight's going to be something else. Thanks to everybody who donated during the show tonight. Thanks for keeping my show on the air. Thank you guys seriously from the bottom of my heart. From my family to yours. Up yours. I'll see you guys live in about 15 minutes. Come over to the Patreon.
make sure you guys get your questions in so we can answer all your questions or links or comments tonight on Corrupted Podcast. Make sure you get those questions in, guys. I want to be able to answer them all. The post is up on Patreon, Mike. Get the Turkey Club Mass are available on Teespring. I'ma eat yo whole less hole out in the middle of a sewer motor fucker. Oh. Good lord, Debe's grants. Well, the, come on. That's... That's not nice. Good lord. Good lord, dude. Start having one of their own. Who is the family? 